Ultimate Warrior, officially named the first inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2014. He'll be inducted the night before WrestleMania in New Orleans. Still some of the best theme music in wrestling history. It's the Ultimate Warrior's music. And say what you want about the guy, but one of the most colorful characters in the history of the business. As much as I like realism with my wrestling, I do wish we had more batshit insane characters like him on TV. Everything now just is so sanitized compared to some of those characters back in the day. Plus, you know, that damn wellness policy. You know for a fact that cocaine and roids were responsible for at least 85% of those memorable promos we all saw throughout the 80s. We can never have those days back again. He's part of two of the most memorable matches in WrestleMania history. WrestleMania VI against Hulk Hogan, which... I cannot impress upon you how epic a match that was to a young fan back then. It was huge. And WrestleMania 7 against the Macho King Randy Savage, his greatest opponent. CM Punk tweeted on Monday night after they made the announcement about the Warriors' induction, Long overdue. Randy Savage next, please. Well, it's up to Vince. I don't think there is a single person in that company, aside from Vince McMahon, who does not want Randy Savage in the Hall of Fame. All the top stars want him in. We interviewed John Cena in Miami over WrestleMania 28 weekend. You can go back in the archives and listen to Sound of 212. And it was either Brian or Noah, uh, You can, I think it was Noah actually, who uh, asked him why Randy Savage isn't in the Hall of Fame. And Cena had no idea. He said he belongs in there, and if he had a vote, then he would be in. So I guess even Super Cena doesn't get a vote for the Hall of Fame because it's two years later now, and nothing has changed. Um, Warrior had, I have to talk about this, Warrior had a very eventful yet short-lived career as a public speaker. I'm sure some of you remember this. Uh, My personal experience with him goes back to my college days when I I went to college at Hofstra, which is a school here in, in New York, out on Long Island, and they brought the Warrior to Hofstra University for a speaking engagement. And I found out about this. I must have seen flyers on campus. And I'm I'm thinking to myself, wow, Ultimate Warrior is coming to speak to to our school. I have to go. I have to be there. So I went. And it was one of the most surreal experiences I've ever had. I took so many courses, as I'm sure many of you did, over your college career. And what I actually took away from many of those classes, I could probably, you know, count on one hand. The most memorable experience in terms of things that I learned, like in a lecture hall wasn't from any of those classes. It was sitting there listening to this this maniac up there rambling on about all these things that just didn't make any sense at all, getting very angry and agitated for no apparent reason. Uh, he, he went on and on about these great books of the Western world. I'm not sure if anybody's heard him talk about this before, and I don't even know if he does talk about this anymore, but I guess there was a period of time where Warrior went on this reading kick with the great books of the Western world. And he said it, it transformed his view of life. And I remember him talking about this, and then he kind of got a sense that people probably didn't know what he was talking about, probably got a lot of blank stares from, from the college kids, and he stopped, and he got very angry, and he said, how many of you have read the great books of the Western world? How many of you even know what the great books of the Western world are? And you could hear crickets in this, in this auditorium. Nobody, not one person spoke up, not one person raised their hand. He got so angry. He, he couldn't believe it. He was like, what are these people teaching you here? And he just went on and on and on. And then came the Q&A portion, where they were going to allow students to come out on each, you know, there was an aisle on the left side, an aisle on the, on the right side, and they put a microphone stand. So you would just, you know, form a line, walk up to the microphone, and, and ask Warrior your question. And there was one... Asian student who went up to the microphone and I don't remember exactly how he worded the question. I don't remember it coming off as being overly, you know, disrespectful or anything like that, but he basically asked the warrior a question about him taking steroids. And in response to this very non-threatening question from this student, the warrior threatened this man and he threatened to put him through a table. I think it was something like, you know, I'll show you if I'm on steroids right now. Why don't you come down here and I'll put you through this table. And everyone cheered. I felt like I was at a wrestling event. The only thing missing was the popcorn. But 
when I met him when the event was over, we got to go up and get pictures and, and autographs, and I'm not big on autographs, so I said, I want to go get my picture taken with this man. Nicest guy. He was as nice as could be. There's a photo of me and him actually up on our Facebook page. If you go into the photo album called The Secret Files, I got some personal pictures in there. And one of them is the photo of me and the warrior from 10 years ago. And he really does. Somebody made a comment under the photo, but it's really true. It looked like he was selling me a used car. <laughs> but he had the biggest smile on his face. Uh, I, I think I still look like a deer in headlights because I couldn't believe what I had just seen. Uh, so that was my experience with him. And then there was the incident... Uh, the following year at UConn, they invited the Warrior to speak at the University of Connecticut. Uh, the Young Republicans invited him to come do a lecture. And all hell broke loose. And they ended up having to apologize when it was over for inviting the Warrior in the first place. Because he, he went off on a student. And if you want to, the video of it is up on YouTube. Somebody had a uh, their phone and they filmed almost the entire lecture. I think there's highlights of it up on YouTube. If you type in, you know, Warrior at UConn. And there was a student, I think a female student maybe, who asked him a question, I guess, about homosexuality or something. And there have been rumors for a number of years about stuff that Warrior may have been or or that Warrior may have done very, very early on in his wrestling career or or even just before he got into wrestling. Uh, I know Missy Hyatt has talked about this over the years. She's not the only one. Who knows if it's true or not, and, and whether or not that has had an effect on his feelings when it comes to this. But he, you know, of course, he went off on, on homosexuality, and he made the infamous comment, queering doesn't make the world work. I think that's the comment that got him into a lot of hot water. Uh, that's what he said. Again, it's on video if you want to go back and watch it. You know, if you really want some genuine entertainment at the Hall of Fame, I say get Darren Young to induct him into the Hall. See, now that would be fun. Like car wreck fun. I just hope Warrior thanks Triple H in his speech for letting him squash him and no sell his finish at WrestleMania 12. That's the only hope I have for his speech. I have no idea what this man is going to talk about. I can only imagine. But as long as he gets that little dig in there on Triple H, that would bring a smile to my face. Them reaching a deal to bring him in for the Hall of Fame is really not all that surprising, even though there's been a lot of acrimony between the two sides over the years. There's been so many lawsuits back and forth, mostly from Warrior suing Vince I mean, they've been in litigation probably more than they've been in business together over the years. And one of the things, supposedly, that Warrior wanted was an apology for the hit job they did on him with their self-destruction of the Ultimate Warrior DVD. Now, I don't know that he's going to get an apology, but they are doing another DVD on his career. It's called The Ultimate Collection. It's coming out just before WrestleMania on April 1st. I think that may have been part of the deal, I would imagine. You know, it probably was getting out a new DVD that sort of undid the damage of the first one which he was very upset about and rightfully so for years when they would try to get warrior into the hall of fame because they've courted him for so long and they've had conversations in the past and it just didn't work out but every time they would come to him and say listen we want to get you in the hall of fame he would ask them if everything you said about me in that dvd is true why would you want me in your hall of fame that's a great question i mean we know why because money talks but That's a great question. And and I have to bring this up because one of the stories they tell on that DVD, and it's a story that's been peddled for years and has kind of taken on a life of its own, is that Warrior was fired right after the main event ended at SummerSlam 91 because he held up Vince McMahon that night for more money, right before the match. So Vince agreed to all of his demands in a panic just to get him to wrestle the match, and then he fired him when he came back through the curtain. Okay, that was the story. Warrior wanted to make the same money that Hulk Hogan was making. He wanted all the same days off that Hogan got, which was ridiculous. Warrior was never the draw that Hogan was. He didn't deserve to be making the same money that Hogan was. He was out of his mind if he thought so. But, but, the story that he held up Vince for more money the night of the show, and and Vince had no choice but to, you know, agree to his demands just to save the show, complete bullshit. I came across a copy of a letter on WWF stationery that was mailed to the Warrior back when he was still Jim Helwig. It looks like it was entered into evidence as one of the the many lawsuits between Warrior and WWE. It has a case number on it. It says it was filed on May 15, 2009. So this has probably been floating around the internet for a while, but I only first saw it just recently. And it's pretty damning stuff. It's Vince McMahon's response to a handwritten note that Warrior sent him about how he feels he hasn't been adequately compensated... Again, he wants to be paid, commensurate with what Hogan was making, and all that is true. 
And this letter was Vince McMahon's response, basically agreeing to all of the demands that the warrior had made. I'm going to have the letter open right here. It's it's just it's fascinating to read this thing. It says you will be paid the amount of $550,000 for your participation in WrestleMania 7. With the exception of special events only, you will receive four days off every other time off period. Your pay rate on house shows will go up 4 to 5% of the net. Effective immediately, your royalty rate on all forms of merchandise will be increased. The specific amount will be determined in writing within one week. Your compensation for the Warrior 900... I didn't even know Warrior had a 900 hotline. I know Hogan did. But it says your compensation for your 900 number will be identical to that of the Hulk 900 hotline. So all of these things in this letter are laid out very specifically by Vince McMahon. And the date on the letter? July 13, 1991. A full six weeks before SummerSlam. I'll post a copy of this of this letter on our Facebook page if anybody wants to see it. Uh, Facebook.com slash the Solomon Monster. It's right there in writing. He agreed to all of the guy's demands. He didn't fight him on anything. And he even said he oh he has the deepest admiration and appreciation for him as a performer, a man, and my friend. So he gave him what he wanted, waited six weeks, and then fired him. So if at any point in the last six years I answered a mailbag question about this, and I'm pretty sure I did, if I peddled that bogus story about him holding Vince up, I apologize. I was wrong. It's it's a weird thing, because it's not like Vince couldn't suspend the Warrior after he made those initial demands and changed the SummerSlam main event. He did the exact same thing the next year. He changed the tag team main event of Survivor Series. Weeks in advance, ironically enough, after firing the Warrior. That was when they suspected him of using growth hormone, that he was importing it from overseas, him and uh, the Bulldog. So they both got fired. That was back when Vince was actually taking steroid testing very, very seriously, uh, because all the heat was on him from the government at the time. It was supposed to be Warrior and Randy Savage against Ric Flair and Razor Ramon, but they replaced Warrior with Mr. Perfect. Could have done the same thing here. Just replace Warrior with Sid Justice or something. Sid was the special referee for that tag team match anyway. That was his first appearance, I think, in uh, WWE. Just put him in there with Hogan. Vince should apologize to him publicly for saying that. I actually agree with the Warrior. That thing was a complete hit job. And as nutsy cuckoo as the Warrior may really be, and there may have been a lot of truths in that DVD, that DVD really was an assassination piece. That story was completely bogus, and uh, Vince should apologize. Whether he will or not, I'm guessing not. But uh, he should. He should do the right thing. Check this out, guys. For you, the listeners of The Sound Off, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial so that you can check out their service. And it's a quality service. I wouldn't be mentioning it on my show if it wasn't. They have a bunch of wrestling books to choose from in audio form, including Lex Luger's book, Dusty Rhodes' book, Hulk Hogan's book is available with narration from the Hulkster himself. There's even one that chronicles the rise of the late Junkyard Dog in Mid-South, which sounds really interesting. You can choose any one of those free by trying audible.com. If you commute to work or if you like listening to things other than music at the gym, I know a lot of people listen to this podcast that way. It seems to me an audiobook would absolutely make sense. To get one, make sure you go to audibletrial.com slash solomonster. It's another way to show your support for the sound of and... You get something free in return. Can't beat that. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash Solomonster. Time for the T 